Hi, I am Dr. Jyoti Patil. I am the consultant obstetrician, gynecologist and an IVF specialist. I am the clinical director of Janani Fertility and Gyne Care, which has been situated in ACS Layout, Whitefield, Bangalore. I also practice at Birthright by Rainbow Hospitals. I am the chief fertility consultant of the IVF department there. Today I will be discussing about fallopian tubes. What are the reasons for a fallopian tube blockage? Is there is any treatment modality available for that? And if there are any symptoms, are we going to have any symptoms of having a blocked tube? Now coming to the first thing, fallopian tubes. What are these fallopian tubes? These are two very fine tubes which are there just next to the uterus and which helps in carrying the sperm to reach the egg. Once an ovulation or when an egg release happens, this tube function is to pick the egg. And once the egg is been picked in the tube, the sperm has to travel through the tube and then meet the egg. So the fertilization, the sperm and the egg meet in the tube, which results in a formation of an embryo, which results in a pregnancy. So now coming to the second part, what is a blocked fallopian tube? The block doesn't mean there is some proper mechanical block which is causing tube not to function. It might be a small mucus or a blood clot that might be sitting in the lumen or inside the tube and which might not be allowing a sperm to bypass it and meet the egg. So what are the causes of this blocked fallopian tube? The first thing is being an infection in the pelvis, what we call as pelvic inflammatory disease, any tuberculosis, any surgeries on the tube previously, any ectopic pregnancy that is a pregnancy happening inside the tube. All this can result in tubal blockage. There is something called as an hydrosalphings wherein the tubes get dilated and there will be some accumulation of water inside. That is also a reason for blocked fallopian tube. I want to emphasize that Tubal factor infertility, that is blocked fallopian tube, almost contributes to 40% cases of infertility. So now, are we going to have any symptoms if our tubes are blocked? No, need not to be. The only thing is we might have unusual white discharge because of the tubal damage or if there is hydrosalphing, sometimes there might be a foul smelling odor and a discharge. Occasionally, there might be a abdominal cramps. Now the next thing is, how are we going to diagnose it? It's a very simple procedure that is by taking an x-ray, what we call as an HSG or histosalphingogram, wherein from day 6 to day 10 of your cycle, any of the days when you stop bleeding, a small dye that is a color will be pushed from down below. From the vagina, this color will be pushed. This has to enter the uterus and then it has to flow from both the tubes. While flowing from both the tubes, an x-ray is taken. If there is a tubal blockage, we won't be able to see the tubes at all. If the tubes are open and if the dye or the color flows through the tube, we'll be able to see the tube. And if there is a blockage, we'll be able to identify the blockage by doing this HSG. So, the next modality now. We have identified that there is a tubal blockage. Is this permanent? No. The next treatment is to go for a laparoscopy. Okay, now we have identified that there is a tubal blockage on HSG. Is this tubal blockage a permanent one? What are the chances of conception if the, both the tubes are blocked? See, first thing we have to confirm that are we able to clear this block or not. Laparoscopy wherein we put a small hole at the abdomen at the tummy, put in a camera, see the tubes and we can correct the tubal blockage. If it is not possible to clear the blockage or if the tube is very greatly damaged or severely damaged, then the next modality is to go for an IVF because the main function of the tube is to have the fertilization happen. So. When there are bilateral blockage, the chances of conception will be less in a natural way. So in an IVF, what we do, the function of the tube, we do it outside. We do it in a lab. That is, we take the eggs outside, we take the sperms outside, we mix the egg and the sperm together, make it an embryo, grow the embryo and directly put the embryo into the uterus. 